Hello. Today I'm going to talk about defining consciousness and why it matters. Most of my argument here comes from my book, The Psychoanalytic Understanding of Consciousness, Free Will, Language, and Reason, What Makes Us Human. So the basic definition that I'll be using is that consciousness is defined by an internal mental experience that is separated from reality. And on a most basic level, it's defined by thought, although what thought is, is also very difficult to define. So in Freud's theory, he said the primary way of thinking is what he called the primary processes. And what is key for him is that this type of thinking is automatic and unintentional. And it's shaped by the processes of association, substitution, and displacement. And so there's an automatic symbolism to the way that we think and our primary thinking is structured like a language. And it also is indirect and irrational. So Freud said that this form of experience is developed when a young child seeks to receive an object in the external world. And when that object is not there, the child will seek out a representation of that object and that often what has happened is a previous scene of satisfaction is hallucinated by the infant and this creates the primary form of consciousness. So he has a radically different form theory of consciousness than we find in neuroscience or evolutionary psychology and he argues that the jump from say the physical world to the mental world revolves around this hallucination of a previous scene of satisfaction. Now, there's very it's very difficult to prove this, but what he does is he looks for parallels in dreams and in psychotic hallucinations and also what he calls the primitive culture of animism. And we see a very similar idea in Descartes' actually cogito in the I Think Therefore I Am, where Descartes says that he doesn't know if he's dreaming now, he doesn't know if he's awake. All that he knows is that in both states he's thinking. Now, what happens with Freud is it's not I think, therefore I am. It's that thinking defines who I am or how I experience myself and that there's no intentional control. So some of the implications of Freud's theory is that it helps us to distinguish us from other animals and computers. After all, we often say computers don't think or other animals don't think. And so the question is, what makes our consciousness different? It is thought. And also, since we're able to overcome material reality, we're also over to overcome the limits of biology. And this means that past kind of biological or physical explanations no longer hold. It also means that there's a limit to animal research because we think and everything that we do is shaped by human thought, but animals don't think. And so there's a limit to neuroscience and evolutionary psychology. And there's also um, a limit to treating different mental disorders with medication instead of talk therapy. We also see here a limit to artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence is not thinking. So one reason why it's important is it helps us have a better understanding of what it means to be human. And it shows that since we can imagine things that don't exist, that there's a fundamental irrationality to human beings. Um, Descartes defined reason as the ability to clearly separate facts from fiction. But on the level of primary thinking, that's impossible. So another thing to think about is that we're not necessarily in charge of our own minds. And so there's a limit to our own control and to our own egos. And that we often, what we fear is often the products of our own imagination that we can't control. So here we see how conspiracy theories are actually inevitable because we naturally think in terms of conspiracy theories where we make associations, substitutions, and displacements. Um, but it's important to realize that the consciousness is defined as being unintentional, but that is different from the unconscious. The unconscious is what we repress, not what is unintentional. So it's what we seek to hide from ourselves or what we um, lie to ourselves or how we uh, engage in self-deception. While consciousness is the primary level of thought and it is the automatic reaction of the human mind. So another thing to think about is that our illusion of controlling our thoughts must be 
an imaginary intentionality that is derived from the ego and that it serves then to repress the primary consciousness. Um, but it's also important to see how human, part of human freedom is derived from the fact that we have mental autonomy, meaning we're not controlled by physical reality, that we can imagine things that don't exist. And so therefore we can tr transcend the physical world. So one issue then is if we have this ability, if we automatically basically believe in conspiracy theories because we combine fact and fiction and it's done in an automatic process, how do we ever have any type of rationality? And one of the solutions that Freud has is what he calls the reality principle, but this notion of reality testing, where we learn to separate our thoughts from Ex the our perceptions of the external world. Um, and so it's important to understand how consciousness really works. And this requires a return back to Freud because Freud's theory is actually more accurate and helpful than the theories that we find in neuroscience, evolutionary psychology, and artificial intelligence. And also because our minds shape everything that we think and feel and experience, it's important to realize that we can't have a completely biological model of human consciousness. And therefore, there's a limit to the government university medical pharmaceutical complex. So I hope this has clarified a lot of the ideas that um, we find circulating today around the question of consciousness and what defines the human being.